Oh my god, Jedis with candy-colored half-shaven heads charging into battle on a horseback. You literally can't make this shit up. Am I the only one who suddenly likes Jar Jar Binks a whole lot more all of a sudden? Um, <clears throat> Master Jedi, the high cholesterol will be the downfall of the High Republic. You just know that there's going to be a non-binary version of Yoda thrown in there somewhere. Agenda, I do not have. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look, we all saw this one coming from a mile away, but damn, does this crash look so horrifyingly good from a distance because I wouldn't be seen 10 feet from this garbage. It's called the High Republic because all of the authors were stoned out of their minds. The High Out of Our Minds Republic. We need a series about the most boring, peaceful era of rainbows and Wham-Man that looks like the coloring sheet on the back of a kids menu. You know, I wonder if anyone will get drunk on green milk from the titty of a dinosaur and attempt to murder their nephew in their sleep in this. Anyway, this trailer looks like it was put together by people who have never done this before. When the narrator spouted off that foolishness about controlling the force, I knew without a doubt that this high republic is hot, woke garbage. These clowns do not understand stand Star Wars at all. Not even a little bit. That shit was so cringy. They are very clearly trying to rewrite the old Republic to avoid paying any of the old creators anything. The only Republic that I saw in this teaser was the People's Socialist Republic of the Galaxy with the president being Xi Ping Pong Kathleen Kennedy. I believe Chancellor Kennedy is a Sith Lord ever since Luke Skywalker made his R2 detour to the Mandalorian to pick up his Toyota. Kathleen Kennedy has been kicking puppies off a cliff. She's been very upset because every time Disney takes one step forward, she takes them three steps back. The irony here is that most of the main characters in The Mandalorian are people of color. They all check all of the boxes, but yet at the same time, it's still not an SJW story. There was even an all-female scene fighting together at the last episode, and I didn't even notice. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It felt natural because the characters were interesting and they went pushing what garbage. Anyway, back to the high cholesterol re- Public fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering, and this comic definitely made me suffer. All of the NPC characters only have two expressions, angry and crying, which is a perfect example of what an SJW is. Bravo, Disney, that you nailed. But one of the characters wears an expression of negativity all the time and is apparently a beacon of hope. Frankly, I can't imagine that George Lucas pictured that the peak of the Jedi Order being a bunch of pathetic, self-indulgent, delusional, hungry teenagers who only care about their sexualities. At this point, Disney is merely using the Star Wars label to push their woke marketing gimmick. But this is why I do not read modern comics. They all focus more on the writer's agenda than actually focusing on a good story. The only good thing about the sequels is that it made people appreciate the prequels even more. Toys R Us might still be around today if not for that terrible Disney sequel trilogy. I mean, Disney just loves to flush cash money down the drain. To save the mouse, you must kill off the Mary Sue. Goodbye, Ray Palpatine. And on that bombshell, thank you all for watching Manix Out.